Welcome back everybody, and while many of you know your way around a PC and the parts and how to build one, there's still a lot of you that don't. So in this series I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about a PC if you want to build one with no prior knowledge required. This episode is going to be about the motherboard, and for the purpose of this video, I have the MSI Z97 PC Mate motherboard. However, almost every motherboard has the same basic functionality. Now don't get this confused with a buyer's guide, I'm not teaching you how to get the most for your money, I'm simply going over a part and teaching you what each like specific component on each part does and why it's important in your build. So without further ado, let's get started. So let's start with what comes in the box. In the box you get a very useful user guide that will come in handy when installing RAM or troubleshooting, a not so important quick installation guide, some SATA cables that you do need for parts like storage drives, an IO shield to put in your case, the driver disk that is useful initially but you should always replace it with up-to-date drivers, and of course the motherboard itself in an anti-static bag. There are other accessories that can come in the box though, particularly with more expensive options you can get things like zip ties, more SATA cables with right angle or straight connectors, and even an attachable motherboard speaker and stuff like that. The motherboard of the computer is like the nervous system of the body, every single part connects and communicates through the motherboard, so you definitely shouldn't cheap out on such an important piece of your computer. To keep things simple, I'm only going to go over the important parts of the motherboard. While Japanese capacitors and an 8 plus 2 power phase might mean something to an enthusiast, to the average consumer and to the beginner, it's just important to know the basics. At the center of the board is the CPU socket. For Intel, this socket contains pins that you will place the CPU on. For AMD, the CPU has the pins. The socket has a latch system that will hold the CPU in place, and on top of that CPU goes your CPU cooler. For Intel, LGA 1150 socket means it is compatible with LGA 1150 CPUs, which have 1150 pins on the bottom. To the right you have your RAM slots. Many modern day motherboards have dual channel support, which means RAM will benefit slightly when placed in the corresponding color coded slots. To see which slots to put your RAM in, check the user guide. Each motherboard also supports RAM running at a certain speed, in this case up to 2667 megahertz when overclocked. Moving down you have your PCI Express 3.0 16x slot. This is the slot you place your GPU into. Now be careful because even though the lower blue slot looks the same, it's actually a PCI Express 2.0 slot, not 3.0, and is less capable than the 3.0 slot. If you are looking to run multiple graphics cards in NVIDIA SLI or AMD Crossfire X, make sure your motherboard supports the setup you are trying to run. This specific motherboard only supports two-way Crossfire X and no SLI because Crossfire X can run with that PCI Express 2.0 slot. There are also various other PCI slots on the board which are compatible with other parts like sound cards, Wi-Fi cards, LAN cards, etc. In the top left you have your I.O. which stands for Input Output. These are the things like USB ports and video ports. This board specifically from left to right has two PS2 ports, two USB 2.0 ports, two USB 3.0 ports, an HDMI port, a VGA and DVI port, a LAN port, two more USB 2.0 ports, and audio connectors. The arrangement and features of this rear I.O. varies from board to board, so whatever you get will likely not be the same. While those are the biggest parts of the motherboard, there are still so many more. You have the 8-pin and 24-pin power connectors, your power phases, your capacitors, the VRM heat sinks, the Intel chipset, audio chipset, fan connectors, front panel connectors, SATA ports, and many, many more. So that's all I'm going to be doing with this board, just a beginner's guide on the parts of a motherboard. Now if you have any questions or corrections or anything, post them in the comments below. Hopefully anyone that needs help will get it down there. And then in addition, if you want to see an overclocking tutorial with this motherboard and the Intel G3258 Pentium processor, let me know in the comments below. It's going to require a lot of work to do so, but if all of you want to see it, I will definitely go ahead and do it. So while this isn't a buyer's guide, how much should you be spending on a motherboard? I usually choose the rest of my parts first, like the CPU, the GPU, all that kind of stuff, so I know what to look for in my motherboard, and then I just make sure it has a good color scheme and whatnot, and then I'm good to go. If you spend less than $80, you're going a little bit too cheap, and if you spend more than $250, you're getting bells and whistles that you really don't need. So that's really the sweet spot, $80 to $250, depending on the overall budget of your build. Anyway, that's going to be it, guys. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more content. Leave a like if you like this series and you want to see more of it. Thank you for watching, and stay classy.